What have I got myself into this time? Alright, these aren't radar guns. I wish they were. That'd be kind of cool. Now, these are actually, um... Ranger 2 from Raytech. Um... Infrared temperature sensors, or thermometers. You basically aim the gun at whatever you're trying to find the temperature of, press the trigger, it shows up on screen. Working, these are very expensive instruments. When they're properly functioning and calibrated, they are very expensive. Think like $500 used. There's a reason these were thrown away. Number one, they're very old. This one was last calibrated November 25th, 1981. Probably when it left the factory. This one, December 17th, 1981. See a pattern here. Um, both of them have bad LCDs. Now this can be caused by age. Um, well, this one it's hard to say, but it can be caused by age. What happens is the layers inside the LCD panel start to separate. The adhesives bonding layers together eventually will fail, usually with old age. Uh, this one is much worse looking. Ew. You can see that the layers have separated, uh, started around, starting around the edges. <sighs> I'm tired. Anyway, and then the uh, numeral uh, display has started to leak as well. Actually, to the point where the digits are permanently displayed. Will it display anything? Uh, probably not. Um, and on a device like this, it's utterly important. This one might actually work. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this one won't work, even though it visually looks better. But this is the relatively compact circuitry that they had back then. For a device that has ability... Oh my god, I am so tired. For a device that can record temperature, store the temperatures, um, has multiple scale settings, Fahrenheit, centigrade, and whatever that is, and uh, can also show the stored maximum and minimum de temperatures displayed and the difference it's a pretty cool little device. I wish it worked. <laughs> uh, and has adjustable um, emissivity, which is probably infrared emissions. That's a pretty advanced tool right there. And for something that's 30, 30 years old this year, actually. 30 years old. God, that's pretty cool. And it's so compact. But look at the batteries that these things use. Each one uses these stacked cells, all of which are leaking profusely, and uh, allegedly this unit will run on a 9 volt battery. You can modify the battery compartment uh, by, by wiring a, a, a 9 volt connector to these terminals, and there you go. These are rechargeable batteries. If you notice, there's a little socket here on the uh, battery compartment door. That is for a, um, a battery charger. So these would be charged up, used, and then recharged. You're probably wondering what these old Mercury Mallory era Duracells are for. Well, I'll show you. Because over here, I have another one. Now this one actually has potential of, of working again. Um, due to its ironically low-tech nature it's not a as high-tech of a device as these um, these uh, Star Wars looking things and I will show you why it has the good old-fashioned analog gauge this is a wall heat spy automatic model HSA 86 pH. The pH stands for normal or peak hold. Peak hold allows it to record a set or record a temperature as you hit the gun and it will store it by leaving the needle in that position. 
pretty cool. Um, and very simple. This is the emissivity control knob. It also has three scales, high, low, and a battery check scale as well. And it also has a very rudimentary zeroing adjustment. This unit uses these two Duracell batteries. They are 5.4 volts apiece. This one is absolutely dangerous. I will be throwing it away. Uh, I'm going to save the other one for reference. They are mercury batteries, like, uh, ugh, God, I gotta wash my hands. I'm probably already poisoned anyway. Um, they are very old. I believe these Mallory era batteries are probably from the early, early 1970s. Um, this unit here was manufactured on 11 of 82. This is the factory calibration stamp. Normally in operation, this unit would have a... I'm so sorry. I am just unusually tired. It's 11.30. I gotta go to bed. Uh, anyway, this unit would have a stamp from an independent calibration shop uh, affixed over this um, to indicate that it had been rechecked and calibrated accordingly. Now, a device like this would be used in a laboratory setting, more than likely in manufacturing. In the 1980s, 1970s, and up until like the early 1990s, this area, southern New Hampshire, um, had a massive manufacturing industry. Um, everyone who was anyone who, who lived in this part of the state worked in electronics, aerospace, um, in fact, Digital and uh, Sanders were the two biggest, Lockheed Martin, Sanders, were the biggest employers down here. Um, unfortunately, all that is gone. Um, there was a lot of electronics and, and sub-assembly component manufacturing in this area. Uh, specifically in this town, it was this was a paper mill town. Uh, this is northern, north of where the area I'm talking about. But the area that these were found was in the heart of that air, that uh, electronics region. Why I'm saying this, it's likely that this these units came from one of those big manufacturers like Raytheon, uh, Sanders, um, Teradyne, um, Hell Amphenol, perhaps. And when all those companies went bust, a lot of the stuff wound up in people's homes. They would steal it from the companies that they left. Um, if the units couldn't be calibrated anymore, even you know when the companies were still in business, employees would take the stuff home or whatever. So there's a lot of stuff like this that f that winds its way up in the average uh, small town landfill or dump or transfer station, whatever you call them. You know, as as people realize that they don't need this crap anymore. So I see a lot of test equipment. I see a lot of unusual items like these. Um, that you just don't see in private hands very often because they're just so expensive. A unit like this could probably cost several thousand dollars uh, brand new. Um, nobody in their right mind would own something like this unless they got it from their employer legally or otherwise. Leads me to my next piece. This right here is a very unique little, not unique, but very cool multimeter. Um, this actually measures voltage, AC and DC, as well as resistance. And this is the RCA Volt Ohmist WV77E. This is a project that I'm working on right now, actually. 